What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We have made it to the divisional round of the playoffs here in the SFL, beating our division rival, the Austin Lumberjacks, last week in the wild card. 44 to 17, utter dominance by your Toronto Thunderbirds. They had a couple subscribers on that team that we were able to dispatch pretty easily, taking on a few more subscribers today, playing the hottest team right now in the SFL. That would be the Houston Oilers, winner of seven regular season games in a row. Wow, they are on some kind of tear. They got a few subscribers on their team. We will certainly highlight them here in a moment. But of course, getting a full scope of the current SFL playoffs over on the NFC side and no subscribers left over there. Unfortunately, we got the San Antonio Voyagers as the one seed taking on the Portland Steamers as the seven seed and then the Anchorage Snowhawks as the three seed taking on the Vancouver Huskies as the four seed. Now on the AFC side, plenty of subscribers left over there. We got the one seed. San Diego Aviators taking on the six seed Salt Lake City Bisons. And then, of course, the two seed Toronto Thunderbirds, your hometown team. Well, I guess unless you're from Toronto, no, but it's my team. So I hope you guys root for them unless your team's in the playoffs. Toronto Thunderbirds taking on the four seed division winner Houston Oilers. Let's go take a look at the subscribers that we have to deal with today first off we got the man under center that would be mr lucas thomas shout out at thomas gutierrez in the comments he is a 5 foot 10 195 pound rookie out of texas he's playing pretty good from what i've seen in the stats he's an 83 overall star dev obviously as i make all the subscriber players and he's a scrambler improviser archetype he looks pretty decent with 88 throw power also pretty good accuracies as well but look at that throw on the run, boy, 96 to go along with that 94 speed. So we're probably going to have to entertain the idea of having a spy out on the field because it looks like Lucas here is the true definition of a dual threat quarterback. And the man playing alongside him in the backfield is none other than halfback Austin Gutierrez. Shout out at Trios the third, 537 in the comments. Austin here has been hurt a lot in the SFL, but he is back ready for this game. So very curious to see what he's going to do. He's an elusive back, 5'11", five, five 200 pounds, also out of Texas. And getting a look at Thomas's stats here, the 94 speed is the first thing that stands out to me. Also pretty good carrying and agility at 90. So he looks to be a pretty formidable option there coming out of the backfield. Going to be looking to shake uh, break the ankles of the Thunderbirds defenders here today, I am sure. Got a couple subscriber receivers on the Oilers and no Zay Flowers. So these subscribers, we're probably going to see a lot of them today, both weighing in at 160. Very interesting. Take a look here first at Kyrie Brooks. Shout out at Verbsky in the comments. 5'9", playmaker archetype out of Penn State. And he had a 50 plus, I remember this, he had a 50 plus yard touchdown reception in uh, the victory, wild card victory against the Orlando Wizards. And I can see why that happened, most definitely, with 95 speed to go along with 94 deep route. So probably not going to want to be pressing him too much on the edge because he could burn our corners. We do got a new subscriber, cornerback on the Thunderbirds, Jax Maiden. So maybe if Kyrie plays in the slot, he may be matched up, right? Subscriber on subscriber battle so we'll have to see how that plays out and then the newest addition to the oilers here that would be floyd butler shout out at floyd shady two in the comments he is six foot one out of michigan state playmaker archetype as well and wow these corners got or these receivers on the oilers got some wheels I, i'm i i can kind of see why winners of seven in a row i can kind of see why 97 speed 94 xl and it looks like he operates, He maybe he's their slot guy, I don't know. He operates uh, in the medium, intermit, intermittent, intermediate part of the field a lot with that 88 medium route running and 92 agility. So the Oilers got some players, some good subscribers. So this one may not be as easy as the Austin Lumberjacks game last week. We'll have to see. But before we go on to the game, I promise you guys, subscriber season stats, if you do not care about the subscriber stats and you want to just fast forward to the gameplay please use the chapters down below but i know a lot of you guys want to see how you performed 
uh, you know, for the entirety of the season. So let's go ahead and check that out right now. Start off with the OKC Antlers. One lone subscriber on that team. That would be cornerback C. Ben. And it looks like C here had 68 tackles, three tackles for loss, and an interception as well. Uh, six deflected passes, pretty good. And also forced fumble. I don't think C joined maybe till about the halfway mark of the SFL season. So I would say all things considered, pretty good stats for him. Albuquerque Armadillo's up next. Three subscribers on this team. Couple receivers here, or a receiver and tight end, I should say. Starting off with Jaden Taylor, third on the team in receiving yards. And he got added late in the later stages of the season. So he's been balling out. 470 yards total on the season. Average 58.8 yards per game. Three touchdowns as well. So it looks like he had a pretty good impact in a short amount of time. And then tight end, of course, here, Bjorn Jeffrey, 402. Good for fourth place on the team in total yards. Average 26.8 per game and also with four touchdowns. So seven combined touchdowns from our subscribers on the Armadillos. And also got to get a look at Mr. Arturo Esquivel here. Missed some time due to injury. I know I keep saying it. I got to turn injuries off in the next iteration of the SFL. But Arturo here had 52 tackles total on the season. Four tackles for loss and three sacks. That's pretty good. Also a pass deflection as well. And for sacks, I think he was, yeah, third place on the team. So shout out to the subscribers on the Albuquerque Armadillo. San Diego Aviators, one seed in the playoffs. Couple subscribers joined late on this team. So obviously the stats are going to be a little skewed here. But uh, we got Cameron Moore, who's only played a couple games and looks like he may be a force already. Four touchdowns to no picks completing 85% of his passes and 300 yards nearly on the season. I think maybe he only played one regular season game, right? So if that's the case, that is awesome. Now, again, SFL's a learning curve here. So this is uh, next iteration. I'm going to have some things cleaned up. Aiden Leslie did not have 1400 yards on the season. Aww. Whoever the running back was that I, you know, changed him to, I forget who it was now. I think maybe uh, Travis Etienne, I want to say. His stats carried over, so I need to make sure that when I... I mean, it looks good, right? Aiden, good job, brother, if you're watching. But I got to make sure when I add somebody that I, I only add low-tier free agents who have no stats. I did that for most people, but again, it's a learning curve, and we will get some things ironed out in next season of the SFL. Salt Lake City Bison's up next. Got a quarterback and a running back. We have a Mason Buchanan here who really, ever since joining the SFL, has really been a force to be reckoned with. Almost 3,000 yards, completing 71% of his passes. And the touchdown interception ratio, 21 to 12. Not that great, but I know a lot of those picks came later on because he was pretty much clean on the touchdown interception ratio when he first started. Definitely overtook Sam Howell's position, but Mason... He's in the playoffs, too, right now, as we speak. So he's looking uh, pretty good. And then, ooh, Kyron Williams, former Toronto Thunderbird. If you know, you know. I'm taking a look at Nico Petey, uh, he almost had, he has more stats, than, or almost as many yards as Kyron. 579 on the season. 17 rushing touchdowns. Holy cow. That is a lot. And average 4.3 yards per carry. 26 broken tackles. Man, uh, this, this uh, I'm going to put my money on... Well, no, I was going to say the Bisons are playing the Aviators, so I don't know how that game's going to go, but I imagine it's going to be a shootout. Paris Black Knights here. We got a couple brothers on this team. Three brother combinations in the SFL. Love to see it. Quarterback Jaden Hayes here, 2,823 yards, completing 63% of his passes and touchdown interception ratio. Not really that great. 15 to 12. So the yards look pretty good considering when he joined but uh, touchdown interception ratio, unfortunately, not great. And then uh, brother Caleb Hayes, third on the team in total yards at 543. Average 36.2 average yards per game and only one lone touchdown. But something tells me these brothers here on the Black Knights with the full season under their belt next year, I think they're going to make some noise. Virginia Beach Blues, who lost a heartbreaker to the seven seed steamers. This is where it also gets a little bit weird too. So we got Yeezy Fuentes here, but... He got hurt in the season, so I had to recreate him. So you got you got to combine the stats of Yeezy Fuentes and I'll be back. I know you guys love the name change there, but these are both Yeezy. Both Yeezy stats here. 
though, combining everything over 600 yards receiving on the season. And it looks like five touchdowns as well. And got to remember, he had Josh Allen, who you would think Josh Allen being a gunslinger. But this man was sub 200 yards pretty much every game this season. So Yeezy, uh, I would say all things considered, pretty good. And that, that would put him about third on the team, third or fourth in terms of total yards. But yeah, over 600, five touchdowns. Virginia Beach Blues, they were the two seed. They will be back, I'm sure, next season in the playoffs. Canton Condors now. We got a receiver and two safeties on this team. So we get a look at Braden Keys here, second on the team in yards. That's awesome. He was dominant. I remember seeing him in the stats and playing against him. He was dominant, almost 800 yards on the season, averaged 56.7 yards per game, which was the best on the team, and also led the Condors in receiving touchdowns at eight. So that is awesome to see. And then we get a look at a couple safeties. We got Mr. Eli Sakowitz here, 85 total tackles, two tackles for loss, no interceptions. That one kind of stings, but four pass deflections and two forced fumbles. So made up for it there in that regards. Then also Mike Collins here, 69 total tackles. That's a very nice number. One tackle for loss and three picks to go along with a pass deflection and also two forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries as well. Melbourne Dreadnoughts, our division rival, same thing. We got uh, Alexander Klubleck, but you also got to factor in the stats of Sia because he also got injured in the season. So if we look at the combined stats, looks like he had, uh, let's see about, let's see if my math is up to par here. Got about 588 on the season, only one touchdown. So that was, that one kind of stings a bit, uh, but you know, as far as the yardage, that would have put him third place on the team. And we played him recently and he absolutely dominated us. So again, feel like he's going to have a very, very good season next season in the SFL. Lone subscriber on the Chicago Elks here. That would be one Darian Wolcott led the team in rushing yards. That's pretty cool at 469. Six touchdowns was also tied with Trevor Lawrence of all people. Okay, very random. Average 42.6 yards per game and 25 broken tackles. Clearly, how about Trevor Lawrence with 13? Wow. Didn't know he was uh, Lamar Jackson reincarnated, but pretty good season for Darian Wolcott. And remember, guys, you know, next season, we're going to have full season stats. A lot of subscribers join late in the season, so that's why you're not seeing true full season stats. But next season, with the full season under your belt and injuries turned off, watch the frick out. Austin Lumberjacks next on the docket. Again, we just played him and just beat him. So we got Michael Yakin and dang, bruh. Bruh. I, I'm fire with these names <laughs> when you get injured and I have to replace you. Yeah, okay. So combining the stats here, Michael Yakin had almost 4,000 yards through the air. That's pretty good. And also had a total of 25 passing touchdowns to 14 interceptions and roughly, you know, completed about 68 roughly percent of his passes per game and uh, also averaged about 240 per game. So pretty good season, a little bit too many picks maybe. But uh, all things considered, I think he lit it up pretty well. And then tight end James Briner, one of the SFL OGs. I see your brother. 503 total receiving yards to go along with four touchdowns and also average 29.6 yards through the air per game. Brooklyn Nighthawks, of course, another division rival of ours. We got QB Derek Derrigosa here, 3,275 yards for the season, 23 passing touchdowns to 11 picks. Completed about 70% of his passes. Uh, pretty good season. You know, could have definitely had more touchdowns, but the yardage was definitely there. And he replaced uh, Old Man Rogers. So all things considered, I, and Derek Daragosa beat us twice. So you do got bragging rights on that one, my friend. So all, all things considered, good season from Derek. Looking for him to take the next step next season. Houston Oilers, fan favorite out there in the comments. How about Cooper Rush being their leading quarterback? All right. But uh, we got Lucas Thomas here, just joined not too long ago. 900 yards, basically passing uh, through the air. Six touchdowns to four interceptions. Not a good ratio, but a small sample size. Did complete 70% of his passes, though. So that is good to see from him. And uh, <laughs> I'm in pain and dude, really. And uh, yeah, okay. It's all supposed to be Austin Gutierrez here. And the stats are all screwed up with this one because... I had to keep adding people, adding people that had pre-existing stats. It was a whole mess. So I'm not even really sure. We're going to learn what Austin Gutierrez is about today. 
I can tell you that much because uh, we play him. And Lucas Thomas, 63 yards rushing as well. And then getting a look at our receivers, Kyrie Brooks, 820 yards receiving to go along with two touchdowns, average 48.2 yards per game. And the most recent addition, Floyd Butler, just joined, only played one game, I believe. And in that game, he had five receptions for 53 yards and no touchdowns. But again, we're going to see what he's really about today. Orlando Orbit's got a subscriber halfback and a subscriber corner. So Mr. Johnny Waters here, 660 yards on the ground. I mean, really playing alongside Jonathan Taylor. They had the same amount of yards, uh, average yards per carry as well. I'd say that's pretty good. And he had six touchdowns, averaged 50.8 yards on the ground per game to go along with 31 broken tackles. And then we'll get a look at our uh, free safety here. I'm sorry, Flash Parker. 58 total tackles, two tackles for loss, one pick, also two pass deflections as well. Very small sample size for Lionel Moore on the Redwoods here. Only one game under his belt, but it was a pretty good one. And unfortunately, they got eliminated by Patrick Mahomes and the Huskies in the playoffs. But in that lone game, he had 261 yards through the air, two touchdowns and no picks, and a 117.1 passer rating. Sacramento Sentinels and QB Rocky DiBernardo here, 3,586 yards through the air to go along with 29 touchdowns and 13 picks. Not the best interception touchdown ratio, but again, the yards are there. Completed 68% of his passes and averaged 210 yards. 0.9 yards per game with a 101.9 QB rating. Dublin Shamrocks almost made the playoffs. They missed it by short and a curly. And uh, we played them earlier in the season. And we got to see this man here, Jesse Buzo Jr. Absolutely light us up. Really good season for him. 3,443 yards through the air. Good touchdown interception ratio at 30 to 8. Completed 67% of his passes. Averaged nearly 230 through the air per game. Also got a receiver and a defender here. So we got Mr. Uku Tree Rat. Again, joined late, got injured, so didn't get to see him too much. 13 receptions for a buck 62 and a lone touchdown. But when he did come back there towards the end, he started to play a very, very good impact. And then defensively, we got uh, Ty Royal Samuchi Wallace with the key and peel reference. Love to see it. 37 total tackles for Ty Royal. Had one tackle for a loss and a pick as well. So shout out to the subscribers on the Dublin Shamrocks. And hey, don't forget about the Thunderbirds here. Jordan Love, not a subscriber. I wish that would be awesome. Uh, Jordan Love, if you're watching this, sub for sub, man. Subscribe to me. I'm already subscribed to you, so subscribe to me. But uh, yards, passing yards, 5,263 led the SFL. And also, I believe, led the SFL in touchdowns. Not necessarily happy about those 17 picks, but... It's Madden. It is what it is. And Tubby McDouble, our running back for the when he joined, which was probably the fourth of the way through. Really good season. 869 on the ground. Average 4.5 yards per carry to go along with the nine touchdowns. Only one fumble, two and 25 broken tackles. And Tubby averaged nearly 100 yards per game. So how about that? And then our receiver, Mike Oxmall. 34 receptions for 362, averaged 25.9 yards per game, and also got two touchdowns as well. But he has been heating up as of late with the injuries to Chris Olave, and Zay Jones, I think, was out for a bit. So Mike Oxmall has become a key, key part of this team. And then defensively, we got a couple subscribers that joined very late. So going to be, like I said, small sample size, but that's all right. Jay Mongstro, our defensive tackle. 12 tackles and five TFLs. I do like the five TFLs, and I definitely also like the 2.5 sacks as well. Silas Vaden, five tackles and a tackle for loss. Does have a sack, but it came in the playoffs, so that's why you're not seeing it uh, here. And then Jax Vaden, whoever I uh, switched him with, they, that person had two tackles. So no regular season stats for Jax. And then cannot forget about our punter, Jack Mavros. Total yards punted for... 2,788 average 50 yards per punt so I do like that 47.1 yards net also had a, a block punt at some point in the season 10 punts inside the 20 to go along with 14 touchbacks San Juan Tigers the most interesting team not sure I agree with their depth chart management because whoever their coaches had these people all around I had to go back and re-add them and move them around so much but Nick Stoyer out of the 
Ohio State, 369 yards receiving, average 14.2 per reception, and did have a lone touchdown. And then St. James, I tried, I tried, I tried. They just wouldn't play you. I don't know what it was, man. Eight receptions for 42 yards, uh, no touchdowns. So that one's a bit of a letdown, but, you know, not your fault. Uh, just got to go ahead and blame the coach. And then we have the Love Brothers. Not brothers, but same last name here. Dior Love had 47 tackles on the season to go along with two TFLs and one interception, as well as four pass deflections. So pretty good work there. And then King Love, 38 tackles, uh, no TFLs, no sacks, four interceptions, though. Wow. Four interceptions and also had four pass deflections and a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. So stat sheet stuffer, Mr. King Love. Congrats to all the San Juan Tigers. And then lastly, and it is game time, ladies and gents, we have the Orlando Wizards. I am Al Musa. Don't think these stats are... I am Al Musa was a baller. Every game I checked, but did not truly have 12,000 yards on the ground. Again, whoever the guy was that I, you know, edited him into had some stats. But I am did ball out every single game that I checked. I do know that for a fact. And then Michael Breiner here, the linebacker, had 45 tackles, 13 TFLs, and three sacks to go along with four pass deflections. I'm curious if the 13 TFLs led the team. They most certainly did. So shout out to one of the Breiner brothers leading his team in TFLs. Congrats to all the subscribers. You guys rock. Discord coming soon. Make sure if you don't have Discord, go ahead and sign up for it because you're going to need it. Not going to need it, but it'll be more helpful for the next uh, season of the SFL. And let's get ready for the game. Oilers, T-Birds, not much more that needs to be said other than uh, I think we're going to go ahead and rock the alternate creamsicles, the oranges. I haven't rocked those in a while, but this is a big game. Who will advance to the AFC championship game? We're about to find out. And without further ado, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field and get ready for the game. Kick is up and out from Corey Bohorquez and Patrick Peterson. Eh, I'll go ahead and take it out with him. Why not? Never usually take out kick returns, and you see why. But uh, T-Bird's offense just told you. Jordan Love led the SFL in passing yards and touchdowns, I want to say. I'm going to say he did. I believe he did. Uh, if not, it was close with Patrick Mahomes and the usual suspects, but has had the interception problem as of late. And that's a problem that you don't want to have starting off in the playoffs. We're going to go Kareem Hunt as uh, our first play of the game. He's been playing really good. Don't worry. Tubby is going to get his carries as he always does. But he is – oh, Kareem somehow kept going. That's right. They have big Aaron Donald on this team. And Kareem gets injured. Wow. And with Aaron Donald here, I think we're going to have to definitely – double team him we just had to play Dexter Lawrence in the previous episode he was all over the place and Tubby gonna get uh, blocked out there by none other than Aaron Donald and there is our injury woes right there this drive not starting out good guys these Oilers are really making us work for it and we're in a tough tough third and 14 so what's gonna happen here well we're gonna go ahead and get sacked there by Justin Matabuike and somebody else so just an absolute dog crap drive. Probably the worst drive I've had to start a, a drive here in the SFL. And I guess if nothing else, we're going to get to see our subscriber punter, Jack Mavros, come out and boot this thing away. But yeah, um, okay. The Oilers definitely have Aaron Donald. That's going to be a problem. Can we get a fumble or something? Nope. That's going to bring out Lucas Thomas out of Texas. Also got a Texas running back in Austin Gutierrez. And what will he do today? Not sure, but I do know he has the ball in great field position to start. Yeah, that was not a good drive, man. That was not a good drive at all. And we got the combination of Thomas and Gutierrez. We'll see if he goes to Austin. It's going to be a play fake. I can sniff that one out. Somebody get to him. And uh, luckily, the pressure was there. He was targeting subscriber Floyd Butler out of Michigan State. But luckily for us, the pressure was enough to get him rattled and uh, kind of force an errant throw there. So Thomas will come out of single back this time, and we'll see if he gives the ball to Gutierrez. It's going to be another play fake. Got to cancel. Blitz! And somebody gets it, Thomas. Luckily, Peters was. Got to remember, he's got some wheels. He can scramble, and he's got that great, great throw on the run stat. So that's something we definitely, 
definitely got to be cognizant of here today. Now, on third and six, I am going to go a little press blitz. Got to watch the uh, subscriber receivers here that the Oilers have. Not a subscriber receiver, but it is Darnell Mooney picking up 10 and more importantly, picking up the first down. I'm already noticing the uh, scrambling ability of Thomas. He gets out of the pocket with relative ease and it's going to be another play fake it looks oh, like. It, it is and whew, somehow Yaya Diaby was able to get Pat Fryermuth, but not before the damage was done as the Oilers got the ball all the way down to the three. Are we going to get eliminated by the Houston Oilers? The hottest team in the SFL. Winners of seven in a row actually make it eight, right? Probably. Uh, if you count the playoff games, Thomas, what's he going to do? He's going to Fryermuth, but the good defense there. We were able to jar that thing free. We had Ray Ray McLeod and also Antoine Winfield Jr. Let's see what Thomas does here. He's going to give it to Gutierrez. Going to get a touchdown probably. Yep. Jordan Poyer had him. And, uh, oh, no, Patrick Ricard. Uh -huh. My, now, wait. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I swear to everything that is holy and just above me, is Austin Gutierrez in this lineup? If not, he is. But why is he so far down? I had him at number one, man. I, I, I don't know what's going on with this Oilers team. I put Austin at number one. And for whatever reason, they got him down on the depth chart. I can't go back and change it now. I specifically put him at number one. And I, there's certain players that I just, for the life of me, cannot get them on the field. He's one of them. St. James on the uh, uh, San Juan Tigers is one of them. So hopefully we still see Gutierrez, number 23, on the field. And not freaking the fullback, Patrick Ricard. We need to go RPO. RPO is our bread and butter for sure. And just in case, we got Oxmall over there. He's going to be the primary read. Yep, and need a good block there from Zay Jones. Thank you, Oxmall. Off to the races. Dead leg. See? The RPO is where we do the most damage. 35 yards on the reception from Mike Oxmall. And I don't typically run, you know, on my main franchise, which obviously it's, it's done now. Sentinels franchise. I never really ran RPOs, but they seem to work pretty darn well on this team here. Gonna have Kareem Hunt block and got some drags on the field. Zay Jones is the primary target. He hangs on, gets drove backwards, but forward progress does say the first down. So this drive uh, definitely looking a lot better than the first. These last couple teams we played with the combination of Aaron Donald, on this team, and of course, Dexter Lawrence on the Lumberjacks. It has just been a struggle, a uh, freaking struggle and a half, I might say, to run the ball up the gut. Let's go a little play action here. See if we can roll out and possibly hit. There's Zay Jones. I think he's open. See if he can juke a man. One man to beat. Could not beat Juan Thornhill to safety, but that's okay because we do get the ball down to the four. This drive is looking pretty good for the T-Birds. Four yards to go. I'm trying to edit the McDoubles raining down on the screen and not even going to have a chance because of Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is going to be a problem. I can already see. Kind of forgot they had him, to be honest. So we're going to we're gonna go to the air. We're going to go through the air on this one. Zay Jones on the curl. Might be my first read, or maybe Valdez Scantling. It just depends. We're going to go MVS. Please hang on to that. MVS does catch it. MVS. Take that S out of there and replace it with a P. Because he has been our MVP as of late. Hangs on to a tough, tough curl route there. And with the Justin Tucker extra point, this thing is going to be tied at seven apiece. Come on, boys. We're going to go ahead and guess pass. We're going to shade inside. And let's get these Oilers off of the field. Because right now, I don't like them. They're making my life difficult. There's Thomas. We know he can do that. Scrambling and picking up the first down. We accounted for every receiver. And Lucas Thomas goes ahead and just kills us with his legs. I need uh, my subscriber D tackles here. Silas Vaden and Jay Mongstro. Get some pressure on Thomas. We got to make uh, him... Turn the ball over, fumble it, since he wants to be scrambling and doing all this and doing all that. We need to make him make some bad decisions because right now, he's pretty much doing whatever he wants, and we cannot seem to get 
a man home to sack him. Maybe Miles Garrett could have a good game. That would be awesome. We need it. Oh, speaking of Garrett, right on cue. And that was a user sack by your boy. Great spin move, swim move there by Garrett. He does get to Thomas. And that will make it third and ten. Okay, there's Gutierrez now. And he's huffing and puffing. So are we only going to see him on these, uh, you know, these type of sets here? Oh, come on, come on. No, that was such a great catch there by Floyd Butler. Tried to uh, swat it with the square button and was not able to do that. We had a uh, defender in coverage there and it's a little bit off on the timing. There's Gutierrez again, but why is he tired? Is it because uh, whoever I replaced him with already had fatigue? I'll tell you who doesn't have fatigue. That is the reigning defensive player of the, of the year in real life. Controversial, controversial decision to say the least. But he now has one and a half sacks, and uh, it's good to good to call Garrett's name. We definitely need to. Oh no 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 no! I no 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 no! I guessed the wrong. I guessed the wrong type of play. This could be bad. I pressed the wrong button. It's a screen pass. It's Gutierrez. He's there. Wow! I accidentally guessed run left. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. But luckily, it was a screen pass. And Gutierrez. Hey, if nothing else, we do call his name, albeit uh, on just the screen. And I guess we're going to have to wait to see the Brandon Aubrey field goal. So back and forth first quarter here. We have no rushing yards and pretty even on passing yards. 7-7 seven, seven is the score. But Oilers are about to, uh, I'm sure, put this thing up through the uprights and make it 10-7. Maybe we'll get a block kick animation with good old Patrick Pete. But I highly doubt that. And Brandon Aubrey is a good kicker. So he... Uh, he will drill that one through, and we also hit him too. Wonderful. A 10-7 is going to be your score. We got to go ahead and get down here and respond. Oh, and that is so much worse than I thought. Obviously, it was fourth down, and we roughed the kicker. So no, it's not. It's not 10-7. They get a fresh set of downs. Wow. Whoever that was, I didn't even see it. Uh, you're fired. You're you're so fired. Floyd Butler on the catch, almost got a touchdown, but did get it down to the three. Tell you what, guys, I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about this. Uh, this Oilers team is hot, and shout out Oilers Nation in the comments. It's going to be Gutierrez, but we're there to track him down for a loss of four. It's Denzel Perryman, the linebacker, and that was a great play indeed. Definitely needed that. Now, the question is, they're coming out gun, three wide receivers. We're going to go pressure. We're going to press and go pressure. At least we see uh, Gutierrez back here. I mean, I don't know why he's so tired. But at least, if nothing else, we're seeing him on the field. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Thomas. Oh, he juked. Oh, my God, dude. He, Miles Garrett has no jockstrap right now. Pause. Why, you might ask? Because Lucas Thomas just shook him out of his jock. We had him dead to rights in the backfield. Get a look at this, man. Garrett could have had uh, 2.5 sacks right now. Boom. He's right there. Sheds the block there of uh, Makai Becton. And I mean, whoop, whoop. Look at, I mean, that's like, that's inhuman. That's inhuman. Looking like uh, Gumby out there. Gumby Thomas. Great move. Able to put his, should be 10-7. But because of that stupid running into the kicker. They're going to go up by a full score. And I don't really, I'm kind of uh, kind of stumped here. I don't want to become too one-dimensional. But we literally cannot run the ball against them. It's it's non-existent right now. And the pass rush is there. And we're just not having a good time. So second and 12. Who can get open? Hopefully it's Kareem Hunt. Nope. Drops the pass because Levante David was right there. That Another X factor on defense. So they got Aaron Donald and they got Levante David. And this defense is not. Messing around at all, and a third and 12. Again, what do you do here? We're getting put in these very tough situations. Oxmall beat his man on press. It's going to be a pick by Cameron Sutton. Oilers, man. Oilers team, they appear to be for real. Hey, it's all right, man. Regroup. Get a turnover here would be lovely. Not going to lie to you. We got Matt Milano. We had, we had what do we have, six picks against uh, Yakin? And the Lumberjacks, yeah, where's that at? I know we had, I think, four last week before halftime. I know we had six picks total 
And I'm going to need that same energy today, Thunderbirds. Please. I'm going to need that same energy today. Let's go ahead and see what Thomas does out of single back here. He is going to go ahead and get sacked. I mean, if nothing else, our pass rush is here. We really got to hold them to a field goal here. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what has to happen. So we're guessing pass. We're shading inside. See if he goes uh, maybe kind of... Kyrie Brooks way. He's going to get sacked again by Silas freaking Vaden. Let's go, baby. Subscriber D-Tackle out of Auburn. Shout out to you, man. You just saved that drive for us. And it's going to be a long field goal. Look, not even going to try to block it. No way. Patrick Peterson, just go. Just go somewhere and Aubrey misses it. Silas freaking Vaden, the savior of that drive. That big sack. Put them out of field goal range. Made it very tough for Aubrey. Gonna breathe some life into this Thunderbirds team. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back to the RPO game on this one. I'm looking at Oxmall. That's going to be the move. Oh, Oxmall, what are you doing, brother? Oh, no. Oxmall done so many good things on this team. Needed him to do something good there. Unfortunately, was not able to. That's going to be a third and ten. Killer, killer, killer. We're going to go PA crosser because uh, usually I can get MVS open. And... But it's the pressure. And who else? Number 99, Aaron Donald. So that was the drive that we needed. Let's claw back into this one, guys. And we're going to have to bring out Jack's Mavros. Let's, Jack Mavros. Let's see if we can pin him deep. That would be great. It is probably going to go into the end zone. No. As a matter of fact, Cameron Sutton caught it. All right, good man coverage, guys. Good man coverage. I'm going to use her up on Wagner. We'll see if Ricard runs a route. He does not. And that's a pick. Oh, my God, Matt Milano. Ever since he came back, he missed the entire regular season because my dumb self had pre-existing injuries on. He came back in the playoffs, and all this man has done so far is get us interceptions. So I, was just, I was just saying, literally, just saying, that we needed a turnover or something from Thomas. And I'll tell you what, man. I need some blocks on this offensive line. Tubby losing one on the play. Maybe the outside run with Kareem. We can have a little bit more success Ooh. in that department. No. Two rushes for negative seven yards. I may not hand the ball off another single time in this entire game because it is just it is just not working. This this is the worst rushing attack that me personally, I, that I've ever had in a Madden game. It is just not working out. So, field goal, you know, I guess uh, I'm okay with it. Although, I'll just throw a pick to Levante David. All right. So, two interceptions for Love. Now, that one was on me. I thought that I could fit it behind him. I saw Oxmall kind of getting open. I will take a, wow, man. We are just missing so many opportunities to score here. We're lucky. I'll be honest, we're, we're lucky that this is just a 14-7 ball game because um, it could be a lot worse. We'll see uh, Ricard. He can't get nothing going on the ground either. Maybe bring in Austin Gutierrez. Maybe that'll help your rushing attack. D'Amico, Oilers, Madden. And I'll tell you what, man, if we get the ball, I mean, we're going to get the ball back eventually. But I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to hand the ball off anymore in this game. I mean, how can I? Unless something drastically changes in the second half. Oh, great defense there. Great. It's Matt Milano, the unsung hero of this game. Can we please, please, for the love of everything that is true and pure above me, can we please put some points on the board and not turn the ball over? Patrick Peterson, maybe you can make that happen. Looks like the punter there. <laughs> Corey Bohorquez was the one to track us down. Come out single back, little TE attack. The question is, can we get protection on Donald? He's been the reason. Oh, nice pass from Love. There we go. That was a nice touch pass. Okay. Now, look, call me crazy. I know. I know. I know. I don't know why I do the things I do. But I'm going to go draw a play to Tubby. And as long as we can get some freaking blocks, which why? Look, what's the definition of insanity? Look it up. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. I'm literally living that right now. Um, and I mean, maybe we just need to go screen pass for a little while since this uh, pass rush is so 
hot and heavy. Maybe a screen will settle them down a little bit. Joe Tooney would have thrown a better block. That one could have been it. Love, only 50% completion. Not really playing too good to start. I'm going to streak Oxmall here. Um, he's getting pressed. If not, I know I got Darren Waller on the route as well. Or it's going to be a pick again, isn't it? I have like a freaking millisecond to throw the ball. And this is, this is going to be the best field goal of my entire life. I've never been happier to see three points go up on the board in my entire life. Because at least we get a little bit closer. Gutierrez back on the field. So uh, we'll see if Thomas gives him the ball. He is not. It's going to be a passing play. Where's Thomas going to go? He's going to get sacked by Brandon Graham. All right. So they will probably. I'm not going to call a timeout yet. Because I know they could do something crazy. But if they run the ball here and get, you know, virtually no gain or something like that. Probably going to call a timeout because we could really use a quick score before halftime. He's probably going to give it to Ricard, which he will. And yeah. Oh, the Oilers called a timeout, really. Okay. We could get the ball back with a chance to respond and put up some last. And they're just going to they're going to use that timeout to run it with Ricard and fourth and inches. Oh my god. A very curious. Why would you use the timeout only to give it to Ricard and then almost get it as well? I would have been so pissed. So pissed if they would have got that. Let's see if maybe we get things going with a good screen pass to Tubby. Right now, I just want to get into field goal range. So if that's what happens, then uh, I'm actually fine with that. I'm so grateful that was broken up. <laughs> so whoever that was, thank you. Yeah. I know I'm being aggressive, but don't you kind of almost have to? The way that the, this Oilers team is playing and uh, the way that our offense is not playing. Zay Jones, nice catch. Nice catch. I mean, that's a good start. That gets us to the 50. That was another good pass from Love. I'm going to go PA Crosser because we still need a decent amount of... We, we got to get it, you know, to inside the 40, most definitely. And again, it's just, can we block Aaron Donald? We're definitely going to double team him. That much is for sure. Probably looking at Zay Jones here, but we'll see. Ooh, it was a, it was a high snap. And yeah, okay. I mean, still time for one more, though, one more shot. We still got one timeout. Got to go a little PA crossers here. Hopefully, Valdez Scantling can get open. He tends to on these plays. Oh, yeah, he's very open, but we got to make sure we catch it. And, wait, let's go out of bounds. I mean, that's good. That's good. Definitely going to go for three. But this will make it a very – they want us – oh, I was about to say. They want us to go for it. Yeah, that's not happening. Justin Tucker should be able to drill this. And, I mean – if anything, guys, it's a one-score game. What a strange half of football from both teams, really. I mean, this could easily be Oilers up big, I feel like, but they can't protect Thomas. He does have a pick as well. But clap it up for the negative nine rushing yards. Yay. I know what my focus is going to be going into halftime, and we'll have to wait and see what uh, the Bisons and the Aviators do. But whoever wins these two games, moving on to the AFC Championship. So a lot at stake here as well. Run outside. I'm making that my focus. We got to get the ground game established. As far as our focus, I guess uh, defend the deep pass. Probably the way to go. See what Lucas Thomas can do. Let's see if he can get some protection. I feel like if he, if he does, if he gets some protection and we, you know, stop getting sacks on him, I feel like he may uh, be able to tear us up, but he's going to elect to go to Patrick Ricard, who's not having a great game. Better than our running backs, though. And hopefully once we get the ball back, we, we really, really need to figure out this running game. And uh, hopefully we can do that. Now, we're going to come out, uh, you know, with the linebackers in the gaps here. Austin Gutierrez is back on the field. See if he runs a route. Uh, he does, but it's good defense there. Jordan Poyer breaks the pass up. He's a full. That's why you don't have fullbacks out there, man. They're not pass catchers. I mean, some of them are. But, uh, no, that, that's why you don't have, have fullbacks out there running routes. And we'll, let's see if he targets Kyrie Brooks. Haven't, haven't had any targets to Kyrie yet. Maybe he needs it. And, nope, it's just going to be Pat Fryermuth. Big chunk play. That was about the last thing we could have had happen. As the Oilers get it into Thunderbirds territory. And this Oilers drive looking pretty good coming out of the locker room. Lucas Thomas going to operate out of single back now. Got 
Uh, 13 personnel out here on the field. Going to be a play fake. And there's Kyrie. I just said, will he target Kyrie? Kyrie gets it all the way down to the one-yard line. Nice play by the subscriber. Shout out at Verbsky in the comments. Subscriber on this channel. Kyrie almost assured the Oilers points as unless we get some heavy pressure here and get back there to Thomas, which we almost did. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a breakup, though. Bobby Wagner, okay. He's been clutch for us. Bobby Wagner and Matt Milano and, you know, some of these non-subscriber players have actually been pretty clutch. I know this channel is, you know, obviously geared more towards the subscribers, but got to highlight good players when you get good players. Brooks in motion. He is not going to get it. It's going to be a score for Patrick Ricard. So the Oilers do, in fact, good thing we scored that field goal uh, because it is still a one possession game. Obviously, we would need a two-point conversion, but that's not, you know, outside the realm of possibilities. So good thing we scored that field goal right there at the end of the first half because now we got a chance to march down here and hopefully tie this ball game up. Maybe a nice return from Patrick Peterson. Is that so much to ask? I freaking suck at kick returns. Is it me? Is it me? Probably. Tell you what, I'm going to start out play fake. Not confident to go back to the run quite yet. I mean, I want to eventually but zay jones he's due for a big game man he's had such a great season for us and he's kind of been overshadowed recently by uh the emergence of mvs and mike oxmo obviously our uh, number one wide receiver chris olave is not here he is hurt and is this the time that we try to rpo i know but is this the time that we try to kick it outside possibly see if uh, uh maybe should have went to oxmo but I can live with that result. I mean, it's pretty bad when a, a gain of four is the best run that you've had all game. Well, it's uh, probably going to come out four verticals, and I imagine I'll have a receiver on the drag, which Zay Jones or Valda Scaling, though? That's the question. Zay Jones, he's, he's having a good game. We're going to go ahead and see if maybe he can get open on the drag route. I sure hope so. Fire it in there, and it's broken up. And I feel like, I know they want us to punt it, but I just, I don't think that we, that we can. Not, not here. Not with the way that this Oilers team is playing. I really don't. I want to. Trust me, I do. Um, I also want to streak Zay Jones and maybe, maybe, just maybe, Darren Waller gets open. But again, we need the protection. I think it is Waller. Bang! That's what I'm talking about, trucker, man. Couldn't truck Paulson a Debo, but that, we needed that so bad. Could not punt the ball back to the Oilers because we got to respond here, whether it be a field goal, touchdown. Obviously, TD is preferable, yes, but we, we can't be giving the ball back to him. We got to go score for score with them. It has to happen, and we made the focus uh, running it outside out of halftime. We're going to see if that works here with Kareem Hunt. Need some blockers, though. Just don't have him. 17 yards to go to the promised land, and we really need this guy. So, gonna be play fake. If I can get some protection and actually see what my receivers are doing. Had Darren Waller there in the corner of the end zone, but the ball was overthrown by Love. Surprise, it's a freaking prize. I don't really like any of these play calls that the coach is drawing up for me, although, although, do kind of like Waller on the streak, not gonna lie. And also, maybe Zay Jones on the drag. See uh, if somebody can get open. I don't like this at all. Okay. It's all right. Going to settle for yet another field goal from Justin Tucker. Third of the game. <laughs> it's a lot of field goals. I don't usually be kicking field goals like that. You see, we just put up 44 on the Lumberjacks. But still, score is a score. Could have been a lot worse. And our defense can just play like they did in the first half. We still got a fighting chance in this one. But we cannot let another drive happen like the previous drive for the Oilers. Where you at, Silas? You had a big sack in the first half and would love, uh, love another one here. Now, this time they're going to give it to Ricard again. Surprise, surprise. And Ricard had a pretty good drive, you know, kind of redeemed himself a little bit. Hasn't been playing so well in this one, but he made a pretty good impact on the last drive. But not on that play, as we are able to limit him to no gain. Now, I'm going to have Yaya Diaby be the user. He's probably going to go to Ricard. He is not going to go underneath there to Irv Smith. And he broke initial contact. Finally wrapped up there. 
but that's going to make it third and very manageable. It looks like they're coming out in the single back as well, so I'm pretty much pretty much going to sell out for the run here, guys. Uh, if I get beat and they fool me, then so be it. Uh, it's not going to be a run, though. It's going to be a pick from Bobby Wagner, and you see it on your screen there. Perfect timing, user pick. How clutch was that? If we score here and take the lead, guys, I mean... <laughs> I feel like we have no right to be up in this football game, but we still got to do it. We haven't done it yet. Some good blockers for Tubby on the screen would be nice. And pushing the pile forward there as well as Greg Van Roten. That was a good pass and a good screen from Tubby. Probably, I hate to say it, but probably the most yards he has on any given play in this game. And for Tubby, that's saying something because I saw, I showed you pregame. This guy averages nearly 100 yards per game, but uh, is not the case in this one. But that's a Jones. No, it's MVS, of course. And MVS going to plow through. And for the first time today, the Thunderbirds have the lead. I mean, I don't even know what to say. And of course, we're going to go for two on this one. Uh, oh, Zay Jones, um, nobody's guarding him at all. It's going to be a quick step drop and a sling here for sure. Zay Jones should be able to have this. I mean, God almighty, dude. Juan Thornhill just looked like Manute Bull with the way he jumped up uh, and got that one. Looks like Victor Wimbayama. Should have been an easy two-point conversion. They baited me. They baited me. When it comes to baiting, this Oilers defense is R, the master at that for sure they got irv smith in as fullback that's what happens when you got your fullback out there running routes catching handoffs third and three though defense what you got we're going big pressure pressure has been uh the answer for this one it's, it's what's worked the most and oh what did i just say <laughs> yaya diaby with two sacks if we win this game it's because of the oilers offensive line and you know some clutch plays by us of course but this Oilers offensive line is letting them down. Bringing out Corey Bohorquez way too many times. I'm here for it, of course. Patrick Peterson not going to get a great punt return, but a chance to extend our lead even further. Still trying to get this outside run established. I'm not going away from it, and this could be Tubby's best run of the afternoon. And it is picking up about 9.5. Surely now the inside handoff, inside zone can work because this is the exact type of defense that you want to see for that. And yeah, with that great carry, Kareem gets up to, yes, you heard me correctly. Kareem gets up to negative five yards. God, so clap it up for my man. He's feeling good about life. He's loving life. And we got uh, final play here before... The end of the third. Let's make it a good one, please. I'll just give it to you, check. Why not? Can you truck him in? Didn't truck him, but pushed him forward for a nice gain of seven. 22-21. 268 yards through the air. Seven yards on the ground. But look at the passing yards for the Oilers. Only 154. That is, and I'm not sure when they show those stats like that, if that factors uh, sacks or not. Not 100% sure on that one. But regardless, whether it does or it doesn't, I mean, I thought that they would have met much more passing yards than what they do. So our trusty friend, RPO, Mike, ah, uh, man, needed him to redeem himself from that bobble on the RPO earlier. He was not able to, unfortunately. It's a big call here, guys. Big call. Um, I think a quick, a quick slant is probably what's in order, but I do need Levante David to take... Darren Waller, if at all possible, so see if he does, and that could be MVS. That was a difficult, that was a risky, risky throw there. I saw MVS get open last minute on the outside, thought it might be a pick. Go ahead and uh, have Tubby run behind Kyle Yves, check our fullback. I mean, if nothing else, I'll say, Tubby not having a really that much of a better second half than the first half, but hey, if nothing else, what I have noticed, he's pushing the pile forward, he's making a good effort. Sometimes that's all you can ask for. And we got ourselves in a pretty good spot here. So main thing is just no turnovers, please. No. Logan Thomas. It's an inaccurate ball by Love, man. He's still sitting at that 50% completion mark, which is not going to win you a lot of football games. I hate to say it. Not going to win you a lot of football games. And I would really like to score here. So if we can possibly maybe hit Zay Jones 
on uh, this this uh, drag route here. Or maybe Thomas. Maybe just roll out with Love. I'm not 100% sure. Or just throw it away. Because literally everybody was locked down. People are throwing punches there. We got uh, players, Charvarius Ward and MVS, hitting each other. And we just continue to settle for field goals, which is fine and dandy. It puts us up. But a touchdown from the Oilers, they would retake the lead. They haven't been able to get much going on these last couple drives. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're in store for a good one here. Thomas coming out shotgun here. Bunch to his right. And, of course, Ricard, the fullback behind him. It's a quick RPO, and Fryermuth catches it. Wow, Jordan Poyer able to hawk him down, but that was a nice, nice game by the Oilers. They get the ball five yards away from midfield. And depending on how long this drive takes, there's, they're not going to have a lot of time left on the clock. So if they score, which, let's be honest, <laughs> probably going to happen. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's good defense there by Jax Vaden. Number one, nice to see him make a play. But if they score, we're not going to have too much time to respond. We would only need, we would need to score a touchdown too. That's the thing. So, uh, talking a lot in the future here, I know, but just got to kind of plan for what's to come. Darnell Mooney catches it, but you would have to imagine. But this is four down territory for D'Amico Ryans. I don't see why it wouldn't be. We got Spy out here on the field too, because we know that Thomas can run. He's already shown us that uh, earlier. And also got Gutierrez in here. He's going to block, which I do like. And that could be Brooks. Oh, man, the deep threat. That's two times now that Kyrie Brooks has caught in the deep ball. We know he can do that. I told you pregame he had a big 50-yard touchdown catch already in these SFL playoffs. And that was a good one there. Brooks only with two catches, but they are two massive, massive ones indeed. So got to start getting these sacks back here, guys. Maybe some more picks. I don't know. I'm cool with either. Nope. It's going to be a Floyd Butler subscriber touchdown. I'm happy for you, Floyd. But right now, you're my worst enemy. My math was also very off because it is still a field goal game, which, you know, it's fine. That seems to be all we can score in this game anyways. 28-25, four and a half minutes to go. Buckle your freaking seatbelts and let's go. Start out with something safe here. RPO out of the shotgun. Don't need to, I mean, the clock is not a factor right now. So really all we care about is scoring. Doesn't matter how. Oxmall going to help the cause there. Making up for that missed RPO earlier. Love now over 300, but the two and two on the touchdown interception ratio is what I don't like. Going to go draw to Tubby. Surely it has to work at some point, right? I mean, that's a start, but... Even when I double-team Aaron Donald, which I did on that play, by the way. Uh, see, we're, we're seventh in the league in rushing offense. We got 20 yards today. 20 yards is not going to get it done. That much is for sure. And on second and seven, I just want something safe with the drags. So uh, we'll see who can get open. It's Oxmall. He's playing a big, big, uh, big factor in this game and a vicious stiff arm. He gets upended there at the last minute, but it does not matter. Clutch on the reception. Mike Oxmall at four receptions for 65 yards. Now, this time, Aaron Donald is not on the field. So, come on. This draw play has to work. And, I mean, look at that. Just look at the difference it makes. A gain of six, which in this crazy wild game, gain of six is like a gain of 12. And just the fact that Aaron Donald not being on the field, we were able to do that. Had he been on the field, probably would have been a gain of two. And second and four, this is a time where I might hit him with a little play action shot. So let's see uh, who can get open. It might be MVS. Bang! It is MVS. Go ahead and dance in the end zone. You earned it. Only problem, though. That was a great drop. Happy with that. Totally. Only problem, though, is we left a lot of time on the clock. They need a touchdown, though. Field goal will not do anything for them. 2.18 to go. Man, I don't know what to expect on this final drive. Hoping for some defensive sacks like we had maybe some picks from Wagner and Milano. Maybe a Jax Vaden pick, subscriber. That would be awesome. 2.18, hang on to your britches. Don't know how this one's going to end. Come out Dime. Dime package here. They got Gutierrez back in the backfield, but surely this is going to be a pass, which it will. And Kyrie Brooks starting to come alive now. Good for Kyrie. I'm happy for you. Don't don't get me wrong. I am happy for you. 
But right now, I am trying to stop you with every fiber of my being. That's going to bring it to a two-minute warning. Remember, field goal does them nothing, so they got to score a touchdown. That was a good start, and they got the ball pretty much at midfield. So, Miles Garrett, you had so many sacks. He had almost, what, three sacks or something in the first quarter. Oh, thought he was going to have another one. He was right there on cue fighting for his life, fighting for his right to party. Instead, it's a Darnell Mooney catch for six. Blip backs now. I'm going to use her up on Garrett again because he was close. He was close on that last one. He's getting close again. Thomas getting flushed out. No, someone stop him. Force a fumble or something. Jax Vaden gets the tackle, and the clock is ticking down to about a minute and a half, and I don't like this. It's Sweaty Palms time here in Thunderbirds Field. I'm going to use her up on Matt Milano. Maybe uh, Ricard will run a route. I'm not 100% sure. He is not. He is. Actually, man, this is the Kyrie Brooks show, guys. Now they're going to go hurry up, of course. We're going to stay in men. Also Preston as well. I'm going to have Garrett come out and probably be an extra defender here in case somebody gets beat on press. I know that probably seems dumb, but didn't matter. Pressure was there. Big third and five coming up now. I'm going press blitz. I'm going press blitz. This has worked a lot today. Got uh, three wide receivers here on the left side of the field. Where's Thomas going to go? It's Garrett. That should count as a sack, actually. And I'm surprised. Why is Houston not calling a timeout? They don't need to go hurry up, but they are. Will it matter? Will Thomas pick this up? He will. It's Floyd Butler. Oh, I can see how this one's going to end. And I can just see how this one's going to end here, guys. And I don't like it. 34 seconds. Maybe not. Matt Milano is on the field. He's played great today. Give me a pick. Yes, it's Poyer. Poyer saves the day. The, uh, but he... Oh, no. We got it at the one-yard line. It is literally impossible. And if you guys... You guys know this. Madden EA has to fix this, amongst other things. But if you catch, if you get an interception in the end zone, you go down. You just rolled, you barrel roll, Star Fox barrel roll down. You can literally hold the back button all the way down, break your controller even, and it won't matter. It will not matter. The recipient of that pick will always, always take it out of the end zone. So now, what should be a kneel down situation, we got to pick up yards. And it's probably going to be Oxball. It is. It has to be. Okay. And I was not about to run it. That does give us some good breathing room there. So all I need to do is QB Neal. Yeah, because it's going to run the clock. Yeah, there's... EA is dumb, man. They're, they're trying to get me to lose this game here. We're going to kneel it. And that will do it for a insane game. Shout out Oilers Nation. Y'all showed up and showed out today. And had every chance, to, both teams had every chance to win this game. Jordan Poyer made a clutch interception at the end to seal it. But Oilers Nation, you should be proud of yourselves. Lucas Thomas, Austin Gutierrez, I know you didn't get to see yourself play too much in this game. Floyd Butler, Kyrie Brooks, I mean, it was just, it was fun. This was a fun game. And it was hard fought, and the Thunderbirds are going to move on to the AFC Championship game against either the Aviators or the Bisons. Jordan Love, good on the yardage, not so good on the completion and the touchdown-interception ratio. Thomas, good on the yardage, but one touchdown and three picks. That's what ultimately sealed the deal. That and all the sacks. No running game at all <laughs> from either team. I mean, Tubby couldn't get it going. Kareem had the worst game of his career. Patrick Ricard was the leading rusher. That's how you know it was bad. Zay Jones was our leading receiver. MBS did good as well. Kyrie Brooks wasn't even existent in the first half, but he came up clutch. Four receptions for 81 yards. Floyd Butler also five for 79 and a touchdown as well. And then Mike Oxmall, five for 71. So good to see the subscribers out there getting some, uh, you know, some good plays. And then checking on our defenders here. Jax Vaden with five tackles. That's great to see. And Silas Vaden, three tackles, three TFLs, and a sack and a half. Come on now. Clap it up for my man. That one sack early on to get them out of field goal range, that was clutch. And then Jay Monstro, also three tackles and a TFL as well. And then punter Jack Mavros had to call on him twice. 
He averaged 42.5 yards per punt and uh, did have one inside the 20. So that was good. So, wow. Crazy wild finish to this one. We got to go check out and see what happened around the league. And we got to go check out and see who is moving on to the championship rounds. And, oh, my God, I cannot believe it. The six-seed Salt Lake City Bisons beat the number one seed San Diego Aviators. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I got to check on the stats, man. So it's going to be two-seed us, six-seed Bisons on the AFC Number one seed, San Antonio Voyagers, and four seed, Huskies. So, <laughs> okay, a lot to uh, unpack there, folks. Let's go ahead and check out the stats of uh, the divisional round of the playoffs. So, 30-24 was your final. What in the heck happened in this game? So, Cameron Moore and Mason Buchanan, subscriber-subscriber matchup. Moore had 270 and a touchdown. Buchanan had 283 and two touchdowns. And no picks for either quarterback. So it looked like it was just a good old-fashioned shootout. And even the running backs really were virtually even. I mean, we had 64 yards for Aiden Leslie with a touchdown. And also 60 yards for Nico Petey as well. But it looks like it was just a <laughs> back-and-forth game. And uh, Nico Petey also had two catches for 17 yards. Aviators, you guys did great this season. You beat us. Got bragging rights over us. But hats off and shout out to the number six seed Salt Lake City Bisons. And then no need to check these stats. No subscribers, but the San Antonio Voyagers beat the Steamers. That's a tough team to play. Lamar Jackson's on that team. I hope if we go on to play in the Super Bowl, I don't want to play them. And the Vancouver Huskies, they got Patrick Mahomes, which is why they keep winning. And we are set up for a crazy, crazy AFC slash NFC championship round in the next episode and uh shout out to all the subscribers still in the playoffs to the ones that aren't we'll see you next season <laughs> sfl still going to be going on so don't you worry but hey that is going to do it for me tonight guys as always i appreciate you stopping by i will catch you on the next one until then peace